Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so I've worked out based on how many weeks we've got left of the year and when I'm probably going to be filming vlogs that I'm filming the end of year vlog today. Um, the next time I sit down to film, I'm just going to be filming a random vlog and then the vlog after that is going to be the roundup of December vlog, which will come out before the random one. The random one is just being filmed because I can't do the end of month film one until after Christmas because I want it to be about the cute friend and, and the visit as much as everything else that's gone on in December. Um, which is why I'm doing like the year roundup one today so that I can just sort of like talk in general about, you know, the, the year that I've had and yeah, so it makes sense to me. This one is going to be coming out like I think, um, I think this one is going to be coming out at the end of the year as well. So the one after that will then be the monthly roundup one. So it, it kind of like timing wise makes sense and I can do a month, a yearly roundup without having to have completed the month. Um, because obviously I'm reflecting back on the year as a whole. Um, so yeah, cool. That's where we are. That's what's going to happen today. Um, so 2021 has been a very interesting year. Um, obviously we've still been dealing with the whole pandemic situation. Um, so unlike with 2020 where it was kind of a thing in like the beginning of the year, but it didn't become a major thing until sort of uh, three months in uh, when the first lockdown happened. We entered 2021 knowing we were in a pandemic situation for sure. We started it off with another lockdown, although I wasn't furloughed for it, I was able to work for it. So unlike the first lockdown, it was better on my pay packet. <laughs> Let, let's put it that way. Um, Obviously, throughout the year, um, there have been a lot of positive things that have happened. So, publishing two books, uh, No Doors Allowed, near the beginning of the year, and uh, We Giants at the end of the year. Um, obviously, I've met the cute friend a few times in person, and that relationship's been going really well, and I'm feeling really positive about everything there. Um, I've been able to meet up and see my family. I've spent a lot more time... Um, hanging out with my friends, maybe not in person, um, but like the weekly, mostly weekly um, movie nights that we've been doing via WhatsApp has made it feel like I've, I've connected a lot more to my friends. This year than I have in a lot of previous years, I think it's been a, a like, I don't think we've met up quite as much since we were at school, where that's the only probably time when we met up more. Um, so it's been a long time since, you know, me and my friends have hung out quite so much, quite so regularly. Okay, yeah, it's mostly not been in person, um, but it's still a lot more uh, connection, a lot more communication between us than, you know, we've had for a long while. Um, obviously, there have also been a few low points this year. Um, the death of my gerbils, the death of my step-grandmother being amongst the saddest moments during the year. Um, then obviously my laptop broke, which was more frustrating than anything else. And then my other laptop broke, which was also very frustrating. And that, that's like a completely different level. Like the death stuff is very sad, um, whereas the laptop stuff is very frustrating. Um, but again, it was something um, that was notable that had happened this year so it's worth kind of like throwing in that you know i spent a portion of this year doing stuff on my mobile <laughs> writing wise because i didn't have much of a choice um so yeah it's definitely been like a year um like most years where it's been quite a bit of a mixed bag um where there's been a lot of positive there's been a lot of negative some of that negative has been, you know, very tragic and very sad. Um, and some of that negative has just been more frustrating than anything else. Um, and all the positive stuff has been very positive and very, you know, very, um, very, uh, I can't even think of the word other than very positive. <laughs> but, you know, very uh, uplifting. It's been um, 
when the positive stuff has been able to happen, it's been a very uplifting year um, for, for the positive stuff. Um, but the obviously the biggest thing that has sort of um, been there in the background and in the foreground quite a lot this year is obviously the start of my transition. Um, so November of last year was when I first started coming out in work. Uh, to begin with, it was just to some of the managers um, and then sort of gradually as the last six weeks of the year sort of played themselves out it was to more and more of my colleagues um then during the lockdown in january of this year um i wore a they them uh pronoun badge to work whilst we were close to the public to try and help um my then team of colleagues start to get used to the idea that my pronouns had changed um as the year has progressed I've also started using a different name <laughs> which was one of those things I didn't really think that I would do I mean I already kind of knew what name it would be because it's, it's a name that's been sort of floating around with me since I was a teenager um, and it was like literally like the only name that sort of appealed to me um, at all and it, I, it's one of those things where I think I kind of always knew it was my name um it's just taken me a lot of this year to kind of fully i don't want to say come to terms with it because it wasn't a case of having to come to terms with that idea it was more a case of trying to get over the barriers that i'd put between me and the name that i wanted um so to briefly kind of explain um, what that is, um, there was a lot of concern on my part that if I were to just simply change my name to this, um, it might upset certain members of my family. Um, I have recently spoken to my mum, who has basically said it's your name. If it's what you want to do, it's not going to make me upset or unhappy. You know, just you know, go for it. Um, your happiness is more important. And at that point. I kind of almost sort of like breathed a sigh of relief and um, that sort of that sort of barrier kind of fell away and I was able to sort of start to admit that you know this was um, the name that I wanted and that everything else that I was trying to do and the reason why I couldn't make a firm decision on it uh, was very much to do with the fact that I was trying to in some way hold on to my birth name um, for the sake of other people rather than changing it to what I knew my name was supposed to be um, for the sake of myself. And um, that was kind of like the very much the barrier I'd sort of put between me and the name that I've, I'm going with um, and will be changing to in the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the year, which is the next step in my transition. Um, but it's been one of those years very much for me where um, this process has kind of gone in a lot of directions that I didn't really expect it to go in because I'm the kind of person where I don't like to be an issue or a bother for other people so it takes a lot for me to ask for the things that I want and to speak up for myself when, um, when I think it's just gonna like speaking up is gonna be problematic for somebody else um, and I know that's not the best way of, of being, um, but a lot of that comes from the fact that I'm a very internal sort of person. Um, so like me and my cute friend um, talk a lot about a lot of different stuff and they find that every time somebody acknowledges um, part of their transition um, or whatever it is, or acknowledges something um, in a way that um, they don't normally get acknowledged and it's sort of like positive reinforcement of the fact that they are out as non-binary now um they feel instantly euphoric and it's always going to be a euphoric euphoric feeling for them whereas for me a lot of it yes there is there's definitely the euphoria there um but there are also times where it feels like i've let somebody else in on the secret or somebody else has figured out my secret and i'm like how, how do you know this <laughs> Um, so like, for example, any time um, somebody who has known me by my previous name refers to me by my new name for the first time, it, it's a 
it's a weird feeling of, hey, who's let you in on a secret? Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, so it's kind of, it's, it's a good feeling, it's a positive feeling, but um, a lot of it for me feels a lot more like I'm, I'm letting other people in on this, um, this world that's kind of, until now, just been going on inside of me. And um, like I said, it's like, letting somebody in on a secret um, and then realizing that everybody knows the secret <laughs> and it's it's very it's very weird um, and, I, and again it's not bad weird it's I've always been a very private person I've always been a kind of person that, that keeps a lot to myself um, I'm not particularly I wouldn't say I'm not particularly open it's more that I'm very self-protective um, and, and a lot of that has come from a lot of the experiences I had growing up where I was getting bullied. Um, I learned very early on that the best defence was to not put all of yourself out there and to keep anything to yourself that you knew would get ridiculed um, or knew there was a chance that it could get ridiculed. Um, Obviously, we're living in a very different world now, and there is a lot more acceptance of a lot of different things. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I would like to think that we were always progressing towards this world, but it's definitely a very different environment from, from what I grew up in, um, in a lot of ways. So, to sort of be in a position where I, I could start coming out and I could start the process of transitioning and as I said, there are definitely there are moments where I'm very euphoric about everything that's going on and there are moments where certain little things will make me feel really, really happy. I think I knew for sure what my name needed to be uh, the first time I'd seen somebody had corrected it on something that was written um, in work. Um, and just seeing it just made me grin like an absolute mad thing. And you couldn't see it because I was wearing a mask because I was in work. <laughs> I was grinning like an absolute mad thing for about an hour because seeing it and, and especially because it wasn't like it was on something that's a little bit out of the way and it's a little bit for like an out of slightly outdated um piece of information anyway but somebody had had corrected on it and seeing that for the like for the first time just made me absolutely grin and I think at that point I knew um but because I still hadn't had the conversation that I had with my mom I was still very reluctant to kind of make a sort of firm decision um but at that point i you know as i said as i'm trying to say there have definitely been a lot of very euphoric moments for me during this whole process um but a lot of it has also been very much kind of feeling like people suddenly in on my secret <laughs> and because i have always been such a private person because i've always kept such a lot to myself it's weird being open and and having that kind of openness about something that you didn't think you'd ever get to be open and honest about so it's a lot of trying to get my own head around the fact that people can and do and are accepting me um as the non-binary individual that i am and like i said it's a, it's it's been a very weird year of every single time somebody new has started using my new name or starts using my pronouns correctly. It's this feeling of what, who, who told you, who told you my secret? What, what how, how did you, did anybody else hear my secret? <laughs> but at the same time, it's a good thing. And the more I sort of like get used to it, the more I sort of expect people to be using my new name and my correct pronouns. Um, the happier and the more relaxed that I feel, um, and I'm a lot, and I'm in a lot better place now than I have been for a long time, because I, as I've mentioned in previous vlogs, I spent a huge chunk of my life not feeling like a real person, feeling like I was broken somehow. Um, I, you know, there, there are a lot of associations that I had between myself and the idea of a broken doll, myself and the idea of a hollow reflection. Um, these these were the ways that I was thinking of myself. These are the ways that I felt about myself. I felt incomplete. I felt like something wasn't quite right. And this is the first year where 
yeah, there's a whole host of emotions that I have to deal with because I'm no longer repressing them. But the one thing I'm no longer having to deal with is the idea that I'm not a real person. I feel, for the first time, I feel like a real person. I feel like a complete person that now has to deal with a whole host of things that comes because I've decided to be a complete person. <laughs> that I've decided to let in. Um, and, and a lot of that stuff is stuff that will be part of my transitioning process that will guide how things go from this point forward and how, you know, what my transition goals actually are. That's what those emotions are to do with and that's what that's all about. So yes, on the one hand, it's a lot of stuff that I'm having to deal with and not all of it is positive, but without that stuff to guide me, I don't know where I'm going from here. So although it's a lot to deal with, it's a good thing that I'm having to deal with it. Um, because it means that I'm letting it in and I'm very very good at not letting things in when I should be letting things in because as I said it's to do with the whole self-protectiveness the whole self-secrecy and the fact that I'm being open and honest with myself and I'm being open and honest with other people yes it's not all 100% positive because that's not how life works but it does mean that I have left behind the biggest difficulty in my life which was not feeling real and I'm so much happier for leaving that behind I'm so much more relaxed for leaving that behind you've no idea what it's like to go through so much of your life making yourself feel wrong because you can't admit what you actually need and who you actually are and you know as a, as a seven-year-old child um when when I realized I was different for the first time even though I couldn't understand how I was different or why I was different I just knew that I was different making a decision to be myself meant I was also making the decision to hide a lot of myself and that was what I needed to do back then to survive and I get that but it meant that from that point onwards I was waiting for my real self to be revealed and it took a long time for that to happen and now that it has happened and now that I am myself and I have revealed myself it's scary but at the same time it is such a huge relief um so yeah my 2020 21 can be summed up both in terms of it being a mixed bag of a year with a lot of positives and a lot of negatives and also with being the start of my transition and yeah i know there's a lot of transitioning to be done after this because i am nowhere near close to the end of my journey yet um but i'm ready and i'm prepared and i'm going to face it as a complete person and not just the hollow shell that i have been living so much of my life all right okay um i know that probably feels to some of you like it got a little bit sidetracked but i cannot in all honesty talk about the year that i've had without touching upon the biggest part of the year that I've had, <laughs> just in terms of personal growth and, and personal progress. Um, I hope you've found this one sort of interesting. I hope you've all had fantastic mixed bags of 2021s yourself. Um, I'm never gonna say, you know, I hope you've had a completely fantastic year. I know what life is like. Life is a mixed bag in general. I just hope that your mixed bag has been the right kind of mixed bag for you. <laughs> um, I hope you're looking forward to my December roundup next time where I will talk about the visit with the cute friend, which hasn't happened yet as I'm filming this. <laughs> I am really looking forward to it. Can you tell? <laughs> um, I hope you're looking forward to 2020 20, 20, 20, 
there we go. I hope you're all looking forward to the prospect of 2022 and I will see you next year. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. See ya.